Well, hello and welcome. I'm, uh, as you might guess, in our warehouse at Portsmouth. And this video is going to be all about the spider mast. Now, we deal with spider beam in Germany. They make some excellent products. And we've got the stock here. We've got the, the various poles and masts and all the fittings here. Um, guys and etc etc base plates and you'll see most of those on our website but what i want to do today is to talk about the spider mast i use one myself so what better opportunity to talk about it than to look at the one i've got in my garden and see whether it might just be the answer that you're looking for to support your antenna so let's uh, let's take a look many many hams use wire antennas and uh, it's a question of how to support it. Now, I know a lot of us have got a house um, where we can anchor one end of the uh, antenna to, but we don't always have that sort of 60 foot oak tree or tr whatever tree down the other end of the garden to anchor it to. Now, I know some people um, can't use the house or they've got a bungalow or whatever, but generally speaking, trying to support a wire antenna does at least require one mast and maybe two masts. Now, I go back to the early days once again. I keep going back to the early days and used to buy two inch masts, I don't know, 10 foot or 12 foot sections, fasten them together. Well, these days it's not so easy to get two inch mast in because it's got to be sent to you, that's expensive. And it's very often handier to have a telescopic antenna mast because it's easier to pop it up and pop it down and it can be done by one man. You know, once you get over around about 25 or so feet, it becomes very, very difficult to put a mast up without some help. So telescopic mast is great. And I'm talking about the spider masts this time. Now I have touched on them before I know, but this is more of an in-depth um, uh, sort of view of the spider masts made in Germany um, by spider beams. Uh, German engineering, uh, they are sort of stainless steel um, fittings, uh, they are aluminium anodized um, construction. I don't know anything about metal at all, but to my mind, um, it looks good. And the reason it looks and I know it's good is because I've had this mast in question for about four years now. Um, it's been about 18 months lying on the ground when I moved house and it's still as good as new. It all works okay, it telescopes in and out. There's no sign of corrosion. So whatever they've made it of, it's okay in my books. It's thumbs up. And the one I'm talking about is the 10 meter version. Now, if you look on our website, there are two versions of the 10 meter one. There's an eight section one, which I think they sort of, they don't say it's for portable, but they infer that by the fact that there's another version, slightly more expensive, seven sections, longer sections, and more rugged. Well, I've got the eight section one, and quite frankly, after four years, it's still as good as new. So it may not be as rugged as the other rugged one, but, it's pretty rugged and that's the one I'm going to talk about today. Well, I'm going to start from basics here. Um, this is a temporary um, situation that I'm putting this mast in. Uh, this is a bit of angle iron which I um, managed to get. It looked good at the time because I guess there was uh, holes there for two inch U-bolts. But unfortunately, no, I was wrong. The spacing between there and there is okay for U-bolts, but there and there it is not okay for two inch U-bolts. Um, it's just a random spacing. So um, anyway, that doesn't really matter. Um, we uh, go to plan B, but this is just a bit of uh, angle iron, which is actually quite strong, and it'll be a uh, temporary support for this mast. Uh, I may well use this and uh, concrete it in the ground, but at the moment it's just been hammered into the ground. It's gone in there about, I don't know, 18 inches, uh, perhaps two feet. So it's, it, won't, it won't come out of the ground. It won't tip over, but it's not totally stable. There we are, that's all I can say. But anyway, for this test, it's gonna suffice. Now I should emphasize, this is temporary. <laughs> it's not gonna stay like this, but it'll prove the point. And also I need to test whether this is the right position for the mast before I finally um, get angle iron and cement and mix it all together and make it uh, a lot more stable and improve the way that it's uh, fixed. At the moment I've got a, um, 
hose clamp there and a hose clamp there and this webbing which is really strong so it's not going to uh, fall down but uh, it's not going to be permanent either. Now we're coming close here you can see the um, stainless steel uh, adjustment sections there. Let's turn this around a bit. Those are lined up so you can see that uh, you need an allen key and uh, it's very very easy to lock these and lock them firmly. It's uh, far better than any screwdriver <laughs> method so these sections uh, start to telescope up as you loosen them and pull them up. Now if I zoom out here a bit you can see that, I uh, hope you can see this, put the allen key in there, loosen that and then we just pull the pole up there. It's as well to make some marks on these poles so you don't pull it up too high. When you've got it up to near maximum you just uh, tighten that and it's job done it's that simple one thing you do need to do is to get yourself a decent um, pulley you've got to make sure it's a pulley where the uh, support cord or rope won't jam because the last thing you want is to jam at the top of the mast so I'll go in a bit close and we can see that uh, but that is a uh, fairly good quality pulley I've had this for about uh, four years now it must be stainless steel I guess but it's never jammed it's uh, and it's well worth get don't get a cheap one get something that uh, does the job right we're going to put the pulley on here just... right a bit of a Heath Robinson thing but anyway I'm going to put the pulley on there and uh, start to raise the antenna So you have to be careful you don't pull it too far out, otherwise you take it out of the um, uh, slot. Um, do make sure that you actually fasten each one of these properly, because the last thing you want to do is telescoping down on you. It's not so bad with a fiberglass mask, but with something like this, there's a lot of metal there. So you need to make sure that when you undo these, you can slide up and it's uh, about right. And make sure that you tighten this up properly so that it's not going to collapse down on you because you could get quite nasty. Well, Quite nasty uh, sort of damage to your skin, I guess. So there we are. Uh, and of course you do this, you know, uh, section after section. Actually, to be really safe, what you should do <laughs> is to wear a pair of gloves because, uh, as I said, if, if one of these sections telescopes down, it could snag your skin and uh, I think gloves would uh, be rather essential. Like that, we're gonna drop the allen key. If you drop the allen key, of course, you start all over again because once you let go, it will collapse down. But I do like this. <laughs> I have to say, this Allen key arrangement and these stainless steel clamps, they really are good. They work well, they lock well, they unlock well and they make the whole thing flow really nicely. Uh, I think it's probably, it's probably the best telescopic mast I've, I've had. Um, and uh, it's certainly weathered well. Well, there we are. It's uh, at the moment I've around about 25 feet, and I've just pulled the uh, antenna up just to um, make sure it all works. There's a very slight bend at the top, very, very slight. I mean, I've pulled the horizontal wire, which is. Uh, a half wave on 40 meters. I've pulled that pretty taut and there's just a slight sign of a slight bend but nothing much 
so I'm quite uh, quite happy with that. I can go up about another probably about another 10 feet actually. Anyway, I'm not going to do that uh, with the temporary uh, installation, but um, I'm pretty uh, pretty pleased with the way that's gone. Let's come down a bit. You can see. So it's it's temporary, but it does the job. Well, the, the aerial's up, and it looks uh, pretty uh, rigid, actually. Um, as I say, uh, that is only a temporary arrangement until I can uh, cement uh, the uh, base in. But I do find that uh, if you can get some angle iron, um, that is not a bad way of uh, clamping the, uh, the mast in place. I mean, you, you'll have your own ideas of the way to do it. But uh, very impressed with the construction and the... Uh, strength of it and uh, it looks uh, it, it looks good um, I did mislead you slightly at the beginning I said it was a 10 meter section uh, anten antenna or mast I got the 12.5 meter one which is uh, which goes up to about 41 feet and it um, has nine sections so apologies there it has nine sections the top section diameter is one and one sixth inch. I'm not quite sure there's one and one sixth. There's about one, or we'll call it around about one and a quarter, or a bit less than that. Um, so uh, it's. I mean, the top section is is quite uh, is quite a reasonable diameter. Um, you could actually um, take the top section out or telescope the top section down and use the next section, which would be slightly thicker, um, if you so wished. Uh, there are all sorts of accessories you can get. You can get a tripod for it, which really, I suppose, is for portable use. Um, but one interesting um, setup they've got, which is, is worth looking at, and that is that uh, if you have the tripod section, which extends to about, I think each leg is about two meters, so it's quite a sizable tripod, and then you add the guy, the three-ring the three ring guy um, kit, which you put sort of further up the antenna, um, the whole mast can rotate within that guy clamp and it is possible, and they do show, um, a rotator at the base. So you could put a VHF a Yagi uh, on the top of the mast but have the rotator right at the base so that the the antenna, the whole mast turns, which is a, it's an interesting concept. It means to say the rotator is where you can get to it if you want to. Um, and of course it takes the weight of the rotator away from the top of the mast right down to the bottom of the mast. So it's quite an interesting concept. Anyway, there we are. The uh, full range of the uh, um, spider masts are on our website and you can see for yourself the choices there. Uh, I hope this has been useful because I do know that one of the things that time and time again, you know, you, you think, how am I going to put, support this antenna? I want to get the antenna high. And of course, generally speaking, the higher the antenna, um, the if you talk about horizontal antennas, the higher the horizontal wire, the better it tends to work. Uh, so there we are. Anyway, as usual, thank you for watching this video. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to press the subscribe button if you want to be kept informed. Um, we're very active down at Portsmouth in our warehouse there, uh, very busy and uh, we do appreciate, appreciate uh, uh, your, your custom. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, take care, see you soon.